Welcome to Warhammer 40,000, where today we are making the ultimate Blood Angels diorama with some pretty colorful Tyranids. So to start, I choose you. That handsome boy will be our villain or hero. I guess it depends which way you swing. So practicing the secret poke from my ancestors, it's time to start building our space marine. With the glue spout dried up, I heard you can heat it up to melt the glue inside. Just don't do it the way my monkey brain decides to do it while filming. Funny enough, this actually removed part of my fingerprints on my hand, so I guess that's my future villain's backstory. So after removing the blockage, <laughs> at what cost? I built the Space Marine and used these really cool resin bits to start turning this chump into a chump captain, lieutenant, sergeant, gah! I don't know, I spent way too long looking at different knee pad colours and shoulder pad trim to try and figure out what chapter legion... I don't know anymore. <laughs> but, but I do know one thing. I do love printing smaller heads for Space Marines like the artwork. It's mwah. After adding the arms and head, guess what time it is? No, it's not clay time, it's diorama time. So let's stick this foam to the tea coaster and get carving with my lovely hot wire cutter. I must say these really cheap tea coasters are actually an amazing base for dioramas, so expect to see some of these in smaller scale dioramas in the future. So the goal for this diorama is to have a Tyranid leaping off the rock face onto the Blood Angel Space Marine down below. But he's prepared to smite him with his mighty power claw. So to do this, I added some more foam and leveled it upwards to make everything look a little bit more natural. And to make it look more natural, I glued on these plaster rocks to simulate that beautiful rock wall. And finally, it's clay time! So now we can slap on all of this delicious clay and get smooching it everywhere, wetting it to give it a smoother look. It's so beautiful. So now we can use our second clay of the day, Smart Mud 2.0. With this, we can begin making a rocky, moon-like texture on the ground. Now let's quickly put all of these alien bits down and start to fix all of the little gaps in the rocks with some sand texture paste. This will make the overall scenery more harmonious as it starts to blend in with each other. And we can now soak the clay in some watered down PVA and add some dirt and rocks for that little bit of mm, texture. With the base of the diorama out of the way, let's start painting the Tyranid. Now I know I wanted to do something a little bit different, and I found this paint scheme from Warhammer Community by a guy called So inspired by his paint scheme, I painted the skin with a yellow contrast mixed with a brown one, and I actually really like this vibrant approach to painting. <laughs> what otherwise would be a grotesque horror from the abyss below. So next I had to repaint all my mistakes with a white paint so that the next contrast paint can be applied and it will look nice. And for this elithid's fleshy bits, I'm painting them with the pink for that added contrast. Speaking of Baldur's Gate, let me know if you'd like me to cover that sometime in the future. I'm sure all those Shadow Heart mains will love me too. For his carapace and claws, we are going to paint it in a nice bright metallic silver paint. Next, we are going to cover it with a bluish gray wash to dirty it down and make it look like some nice blue steel. 
One of the reasons for this, it'll look nice as a raw metallic colour like it belongs on this forbidden planet. I also added some gloss varnish and glue to his tentacles to add to the grotesque factor. With the Tyrolithid now out of the way, we can paint the diorama, and for this I wanted a cool spacey look. So I tested some paint schemes out and settled for a nice grey, and abandoned my paintbrush for a much superior airbrush. I painted all of the tentacles and scenery bits to suit the Tyranids, so I used silvers, pinks, and of course, the colour egg. And if you're enjoying this video, maybe give it a nice cheeky like and sub. If you're able to, you can also become a member where you'll get some extra videos each month, alongside the pride and satisfaction of donating to someone you haven't met in real life. Maybe you will one day, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and back to the video. Now let's get back to those pesky blood angels. For his armor, I did an extreme xenophile highlight, meaning basically just white with a bit of black beneath. And then I airbrushed all of his armour with a nice red ink. And then painted his knee and shoulder pads black to what I hope resembles the first company. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Now swiftly onto his trim, I painted that gold for no reason other than it looks cool. Okay, so this part I wanted to add some highlights by adding some contrast paint on top of the dry brushed white, which, uh, oh, I didn't record it, damn. But hey ho, we live and learn, and for some reason I then did this to all of the other black armour after not liking the cape, but it did give me some cool ideas for some comic book style painting later on. And of course, it's time to play with some enamel washes. And for this, I'm going to be using a dark brown enamel wash to dirty him up a bit and really add that contrast to his flagrant enemy. After removing the wash with some mineral spirits, <laughs> oh, it's a terrible joke. <laughs> I'll move on. It's time to add some transfers onto his armor. And this is my first time actually doing this in this one and a half years. And oh boy, was it fiddly. Once they were stuck down, I put some more enamels on to mattify them and remove them after, to keep it in style with a the theme. And with that, we can complete the diorama finally! I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, let me know your thoughts and ideas. I've been Reese, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>